All right, let's take a look. So, our answer was non-significant. How do I interpret this answer, Jose? All right, this is how I would write up my answer. T represents the statistical test that I used, right? With nine degrees of freedom, working backwards, if I know I have two groups, right? Nine plus two, that must mean my sample size was 11. There was 11 people in my study. So working backwards, I can use my degrees of freedom to help me figure out the sample size. Nine plus two, because we had two groups, was 11. That's my total sample size. Here is my OV, my obtained value, 2.005. Where did you get this answer? It's the answer that I obtained or observed or found from the formula. And again, I looked at page 403. I looked up the critical value. I compared my answer, the OV, against the critical value. And what did I find? I found that the OV was less than the CV which automatically tells me P must be bigger than alpha. If I see either one of these things, I know that my result, my answer, is non-significant, right? Non-significant. Let's go to the next slide. Let me miss that. Okay. So, what did we do? We compared the observed value with the critical value. 2.005 is the observed value, 2.262 is the critical value. How did we find this critical value? We used an alpha of 5% when we did a two-tailed test with nine degrees of freedom, right? We have to make a decision, right? If my answer, the observed value, is more extreme than the critical value, what's your decision? We're going to reject the null hypothesis. We're going to stop believing that there's no difference and believe the other idea, that there is a difference. However, if that's not the case, if the observed value is not more extreme than the, than the critical value, what are we going to do? We're going to retain, we're going to keep believing the null hypothesis. What's the null hypothesis? It's the statement that says there is no difference between the groups. So what did we find? We found that the OV was not more extreme than the CV. So what are we gonna do? What's our decision? We're gonna retain the null hypothesis. We're gonna keep it. All right, so Jose, how would you write this up? So. We interpret the observed results at an alpha of 0.05 and 0.01 for both a one-tail and two-tail test. What is your decision? Well, we really did this, remember, when we really did this, we did it for a two-tail test at 5%. So for our example, because the observed value of T with nine degrees of freedom equal 2.005 is not more extreme than a critical value of 2.252 at an alpha of 0 0.05, right? This was two tails, right? What did we do? We retain the null hypothesis. Why? Because our results were non-significant. What are we doing with the research hypotheses? Well, we're gonna reject them, right? It's not accepted, right? That's a better way of phrasing it, I guess you could say. I never had it, so we can't reject it. The research hypothesis is not accepted. Okay. We're gonna keep believing what we believed at the beginning of the study. We're going to retain the null hypothesis. All right, so let me erase this real quickly because I have it printed out so you can read it because my writing is sloppy. And there it is, right? So, what did we do? We interpreted the observed result at an alpha of 0.05 for a two-tailed test. What is our decision? Because the observed value of 2.005 is not more extreme than the critical value of 2.262. 
at an alpha of 0.05, we retain the null hypotheses and the research hypothesis is rejected. So I think I made a typo earlier. Yeah, you know, transpose the number, I wrote the wrong number, 2.52 is what I wrote, it's actually 2.62, but I hope this makes sense to you, right? The research hypothesis is not accepted, in other words, it's rejected, we're going to retain the null hypothesis, we're gonna keep believing that there is no difference. 